Good afternoon, Harlem and Harlems of the world. I'm Terry Wisdom, and this is Harlem Network News. And as you can see, I have my Black History Month, really Black History Year background behind me and the world. Uh, Harlem Network News, as many of you know, is a new media platform. We started at the onset of COVID and we are still here. Very critical. Uh, we realized at the onset of COVID when Black folks were walking around Harlem and saying, I'm Black, I can't get it. And that's because they did not see their own images in the media. So we are doing here at Harlem Network News what is an essential service. Uh, we air every Sunday at four on YouTube and Facebook. We have specials and we cover many, many, many things that are happening in our community. Um, I just want to just give out special prayers because we once again uh, have had um, just mass murders, you know, in a couple of cities here in the country. Uh, we've had people in uh, trucks plowing down people in Brooklyn right here in our backyard, uh, killings every other day. And somehow our government doesn't get that we got to shut down the guns. That's one of the things. So today um, is a, a very critical day and a very timely day. Uh, we have guests that are here from uh, Blackberry Productions, Blackberry uh, Documentary uh, Theater Company. And um, they are really addressing uh, from behind the scenes um, some of what we're dealing with in the gun violence. I have uh, Dr. Uh, John Martin Green here with us. Uh, please, uh, Dr. John Martin Green, uh, let us know who you are, whose you are, and your connection to Blackberry Productions and a little bit about Blackberry Productions. And then of course, we will go to uh, Reverend Rhonda, uh, Akake McQueen Noor, uh, who also is part of the project, and she'll let us know a little bit about who she is and who she is. So thank you, uh, Dr. John McQueen. The floor is yours. Thank you, Terry, for having us. Uh, yes, I am uh, John Martin Green. I am a doctor of health education. Uh, a theater producer and director, and I am co-founder and artistic director of Blackberry Productions Documentary Theater Company that um, develops theater that sheds light on issues impacting our communities and creates forums for uh, a multiplicity of voices and perspectives in solution-focused reflection. So the theater pieces that we develop, we use as centerpieces for community forums. Um, in addition to producing and directing theater works um, in settings, uh, varied settings such as colleges, uh, prison schools, community-based okay. organizations, also commercial venues like Ensemble Studio Theater downtown and the Apollo Theater uptown. All right, all right, okay, that's great. And you're an educator as well, uh, Dr. John Martin Green? I am. I uh, am a lecturer at uh, Hostos, which is one of the junior colleges in the City of University of New York system. Okay. Um, yeah. Where I teach health education, community health, interpersonal relations and teamwork and nutrition. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Well, Reverend Rhonda Akake McLean Noor, uh, share with us who you are and whose you are, and your connection to uh, Blackberry Productions, or Blackberry Documentary Theater Productions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Terry, for having me on again. I love Harlem Network News and all that you're doing uh, for our community in Harlem. Um, hi, John, Dr. Dr. John Mark Green. Um, Reverend Ron. I am... Uh, an interfaith minister, um, a Yoruba priestess, and a, a griot storyteller, as well as an arts administrator and a drama therapist. Um, with Blackberry Productions, um, I have been an actress. I have been a, a part of the producing team and um, a coordinator 
for the COP project, which we will talk more about shortly. Um, but I am uh, so excited and I've been working with Black Bear Productions for over 30 years. So wow. we, are, uh, we have been in the trenches mm -hmm. uh, documenting what is happening in our communities and the world at large and how it affects our communities. So I'm real excited. Okay, and I know um, we have, and she's not a silent partner, but she's not on here with us of uh, Black Bear Productions. And that is in the person of uh, Stephanie Berry. So can uh, either of you tell us who is Stephanie Berry and her connection to Blackberry Productions? Stephanie Berry is the founder um, of Blackberry Productions um, for whom um, Blackberry is named. She was the Blackberry for whom Blackberry Productions is named. I love it. And, and what is, I know just of what I know, and one of the reasons that I love these um, interviews is I always find out more about people, even people that I know, you know, there's always a reveal. So I know that Stephanie Berry, as you said, is the founder of Blackberry is named for her. Uh, I know she's uh, an actress, a writer, director, um, so uh, everything uh, coming together. And I think it's phenomenal. Uh, I have been um, watching you for 30 years and the work you do and seeing the evol evolution of it. But I wanna get right to this COP project. Um, so uh, this is uh, Harlem Network News. I am Terry Wisdom. And uh, I'm here with uh, the members of Blackberry Productions and we are going to speak about the COP project. I want to dive right into that because I know you have an event coming up next week and knowledge is power. I want our audience to know what's going on. So thank you very much. There's a, a project coming up that, but we need to know more about the COP project and what has happened. I know there was a play and now you have a project coming up with a video. So if you could just expound on that, either one of you. Thank you. Sure. So um, the communities organizing for partnership in peace um, initiative um, or COP, C O W P, for short, um, is um, an intervention model that was uh, conceived and initiated by. Blackberry Productions and Sheila K. Davis's New Professional Theater. Um, together two years ago this time, in February of 2010, I'm sorry, 2021, I should say, um, after a lot of back and forth for several months following the lynching of George Floyd in uh, the spring of 2021, we got um, a green light from then Chief of, of uh, Community Affairs, NYPD Chief of Community Affairs, uh, Jeffrey Madre, to do this, do an intervention between Black and Brown youth um, and NYPD officers, in which we would synthesize elements of theater, um, modalities and, and communication skills um, in workshops between youth and police, to okay. the focus of which is shifting the culture of, of policing in our communities. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds amazing um, and very needed. I've had the um, opportunity to look over some of the uh, New York City Board of Education modules that are dealing uh, you know, with how can we talk and engage our students. And one of the things was to really um, teach this developmental stuff across the curriculum. You know, so I think it's very interesting that across all kinds of lines, that's what you're doing. Um, Reverend Rhonda, did you wanna share a little bit uh, regarding uh, your vision and how you see the COP uh, project? 
and well, what the, the, your part in it? The um, I uh, am one of the coordinators and have also facilitated um, some of the workshops, but the workshops are primarily run by Dr. John Martin Green and uh, former detective Christine Barksdale, who, um, you know, she has an inside point of view from an officer's point of view. Um, she's recently retired and uh, John Martin Green and I kind of, with our theater backgrounds um, have, well, John Martin, Dr. Green has, um, a theater background and directing and uh, the human behavior aspect and mm -hmm. working with teens. And I'm a, a person that has worked with youth for over 40 years, 50 years probably. Um, and so we are balanced between all of each other. Um, okay. They are the two main facilitators and the project really engages youth and the officers Mm -hmm. in a safe and uh, viable setting where mm -hmm. they become partners for peace. Um, where, but they, ha they have to learn about each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the discussions where young people ask, well, what is your life like when you, do you have a life besides being a cop? Or, oh. you know, some other questions, uh, what kinds of things do you like? And they share those kinds of things. They do role plays mm -hmm. uh, for different situations. And some of the, the attitudes have changed and shifted as a result of the workshops around, for example, before this project, I didn't necessarily go up to police officers and say, hello, how are you? Or what, because of the nature of our relationship to officers in our community. I would be nice if, you know, uh, they walk by me or something, but I wouldn't necessarily go up to them and say, hi, how's your day going? Or as a result of this project and uh, the humanizing of the officers from the activities we're doing in the project and the youth has made me individually um, take a different look at looking at each police officer as an individual who lives in our community or lives in a community and is just like me and has stresses, has uh, things and protocols that may, and, and the institution race, um, racism in terms of the policing institution mm -hmm. affects them just as much as it affects us. So just, and so, the things that the youth have said about, you know, they don't even want to talk to officers or, or have officers talk to them because of their fears or whatever. So a lot of stuff came out of the workshop okay. and it, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful process. Okay, well, thank you for sharing. Um, I'm Terry Wisdom and this is Harlem Network News. I'm here uh, with members of the Blackberry Productions Documentary Theater Company and I'm with Dr. John Martin Green, uh, Reverend Rhonda Akanke McQueen Noor, and uh, they are just speaking about the COP project. And I know there's an upcoming event, but how long has the COP project been going on? Um, how many uh, people are involved? How many uh, police on the police side are involved? How many on the young people are involved? And what is the age range? of the young people and what was the criteria for being a part? Well, um, the, since um, the summer of 21, we have done three series of workshops, um, including um, upwards of 50 black and brown youth aged 17 to 24 and um, uh, more than 40 NYPD police officers. Um, and um, what were the other questions? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I tend uh, to do like multiple questions, but um, yeah, I think you kind of answered the framework. I wanted to know how long the program had been going on, mm -hmm. um, the age range of the young people, how mm -hmm. many uh, police officers, um, 
were involved and how many um how many young people uh, yes yeah. so i think you really um answered everything and that's um extremely important i mean it's um unique you know for you to even do this kind of work and i do think that um when people get to know one another um it humanizes the police it humanizes the young people and it takes it out of you know, this one is a monster, that one is a monster. Um, and that's really important, um, just going with one-on-one. -on -one. You know, it really makes a difference. What are some of the breaths that you've seen occur um, through the project, uh, Reverend Ron? I'm sorry, some of the what? Yeah, yeah, some of the breaths or the opening ups or the changes that you've seen. Evolve. Well, as I mentioned, I, I I spoke from a personal point of view. Yes, from the youth from the youth point of view, um, they are from what I've seen and heard. You know, when an officer shares a story about when they were afraid in life, or their childhood, or some of the writing prompts that happened where they wrote about different special times in their lives um, or wrote about how they handled a protest um, situation and, and mm -hmm. how objectively or personally they took it or didn't. Um, I think more conversations um, and more uh, engagement with youth and officers and the community which um, takes us into the community forum, which is coming up soon. Um, but the youth, you know, some of them are like, feel like the cops are their friends, particularly the ones that they engage with in the workshop, what, okay. which makes them uh, more likely to mm -hmm. not be so afraid when they see a cop on the corner or to not address them or decide that all cops are bad all cops are going to brutalize us because we're black or brown um, or a person of color. Um, so they have shifted their perception of police officers and they are saying and speaking up about how they want those officers that they are engaged with, how they want to see them policing in their community, which is what we are opening it up to for the rest of the community. Um, to address with our upcoming forum. Okay. Also, okay. if I may, might add. Yes, please, um, please. Uh, this is a so the, the intentions, this is a procedural justice or procedural fairness initiative um, where our um, focus, as Reverend Rhonda has been saying, um, is in facilitating shifts in knowledge, awareness and attitudes on the part of, of police on a grassroots level, uh, but also in supporting the development of um, communication and leadership skills among our young people so that um, they can, beyond the humanizing um, aspect that, that happens naturally by yeah. our engaging with each other, um, they can feel empowered to um, speak to officers okay. and, and call for um, the, the courtesy professionalism and respect that is the, the credo of our NYPD folk. Okay. And also when us utilizing the arts, um, people can take a step back from being, you know, their personal uh, attitudes or beliefs and play, put themselves in the role of another person um, when they role play, if a youth plays an officer, they've got to think through everything they're doing and saying as an officer would. And the okay. officer playing a youth, they got to think through. And so when you have those um, role playing and other kinds of team building techniques through the arts and through theater and music and all the things we're doing, um, they begin to shift their thinking because you have to think outside the box. And sometimes unless you are in that role, 
you can't, you're only thinking about how you're responding to how that person is. Mm -hmm. But when you are that person and playing that person, you have to really uh, engage your body, mind, and spirit Mm -hmm. and how that person may be thinking and why. And so it's been very effective on that level where the youth and the officers are role-playing in different scenarios and having to play each other in different okay. scenarios. That the, the, I have a, a question, and I don't know if it's part of the uh, purview of the program. Um, and I'm Terry Wisdom, this is Harlem Network News, and uh, we're having a robust discussion about the COP uh, program that's been going on for uh, over almost over a year now. And um, the, the concern is the, the youth that are part of the program, are these youth that are like college students or working people or formerly incarcerated um, or high school students? What is the, um, who are the youth? Are they yes. people? have been violent or gone through trouble and how do we feel this program is helping the youth to be able to function and evolve better and merge and you know uh rise up the answer is yes so the students have included all of the above including um high school students some college students um uh, we've had students who are on probation. Um, we've had students. I don't know if we've had any formally incarcerated youth yet. Oh yeah, okay. we did in the writing okay. workshop. That's right. In the writing okay. workshop, we did. Yes. Okay. So, um, and um, the criteria is that they be black and brown youth, um, many of whom have had. Um, exchanges with police that okay. were destructive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is a very valid and valuable uh, tool uh, that is happening because it's almost like you're now having emissaries who, you know, see the world a little bit different, maybe can share with friends and family um, and are finding, finding their voice, as uh, we would say. Um, I know that last summer there was a play that came out of the COP program. Could anyone share about that and the impact uh, that that had on the community and if that's coming back? And then let's uh, quick get to what's getting ready to happen next week. In fact, there were two plays. So you'll recall that um, the COP project, the Communities Organizing in Partnership for Peace, which was formerly called Commonalities and Opposites in Partnership for Peace, um, was formed by both Blackberry Productions, Documentary Theater Company, and New Professional Theater. And uh, during the first year of workshops between police and youth, two theater pieces emerged from that work. Um, One was called Breathe, which was presented um, summer of 21 at Aaron Davis Hall here in in West Harlem. And uh, another- I had the honor. (laughs) Yes, that was was performed by professional actors. Okay. And the other piece is called You Have the Right to Remain Heard which uh, was performed in multiple community settings by police and youth, an excerpt of which we're going to be sharing at the upcoming community forum. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, Reverend um, Martin, I want to add to that. Chime in, that, chime in. <laughs> I know that the, 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 the production between New Professional Theater and Blackberry, that interviews were taken from officers and youth um around their experiences with each other um and as being a police officer or being a young person um and interacting with police officers and then uh, writers were hired to uh write the play breathe based on the interviews and the uh monologues of the youth and police officers Mm -hmm. and then that's where the professional actors did it so then the next time the writing was done by the police and youth in the actual project 
Okay. And they actually performed it. And um, it was tweaked and, you know, Stephanie Berry and uh, John, Dr. Green and, you know, tweaked it um, so that it. And Juan uh, Ramirez. Yeah. And Juan Ramirez. Okay. And, and right. the first yeah. one was written by uh, Cassandra, Cassandra Medley, Medley, Stephanie Berry and Candido Torado. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and Sheila K. Davis was uh, the, is the director of New Tradition. Professional Theater. So we've had a lot of. Uh, things happening and we're real excited about our next uh our next phase which okay. is next week <laughs> okay so um tell us a little bit about uh the date the time uh what's going to happen uh what the event is called what folks can expect uh who the speakers are just tell us tell us all all right. Well, communities organizing, Blackberry Productions, communities organizing in partnership for peace, um, community forum on policing okay. in our communities is going to be um, uh, conducted at Harlem School of the Arts at 645 St. Nicholas Avenue. That's St. Nicholas and 142nd Street on Tuesday, February 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. Okay. And it is an opportunity um, to convene police and community in creative collaboration around resolving some of the issues with respect to the policing of our communities. And we're going to uh, have uh, guest speakers like Assemblyman Al Taylor, um, community activist uh, Aisha Sekou, um, community coordinator of the NYPD, Brian Adams. Um, Community Board 9 Chair Barry Weinberg. We're going to screen the video, um, an excerpt of one of the plays, as we mentioned, and uh, we're going to dialogue with each other about where we are as a community uh, with the respect to the policing of our community, okay. observing the police as part of the community, because mm. whether they know it or not, and no matter where they live or come from, as they police our communities, they are part of the community. Absolutely. And they need to, to understand that. It's incumbent upon them to understand that. It's incumbent upon us to understand that as well so that we can hold them to account as community members in the okay. policing of our community. Okay. Would you like to weigh in, uh, Reverend Rondo, in terms of the event? Okay, I think um, Reverend, okay, you, you, you're, you were muted and now you're not, you're fine. Okay, Reverend. No, Rondo. I wasn't gonna say anything, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I just wanted to make sure people heard Harlem School of the Arts, St. Nicholas and 141st Street, 6 to 8 p.m. And we want everybody to come out. Come because out. Our, okay. Your voices are important and we're having this forum for our community. So please, if you live in Harlem, if you live in New York City, and this is an issue you want, we can't keep talking about what's wrong with the NYPD and the police in our communities, unless we come together and voice our opinions and our feelings and get out whatever we're feeling and thinking, and then together create action plans to create the kind of uh, policing in our communities that we want to see and that we know can happen. But if we don't come out and um, not just to this, but to anything that's asking for mm -hmm. our voices to be heard. We can't sit back and complain about what's wrong with the community, what's wrong with the city, what's wrong with the police. We need to come out and speak out and we're looking forward to hearing from you. And the police are looking forward to hearing from you. And we are looking forward to you hearing from them. Okay. And it's, it's more than about just venting. It's not just about, um, it's, it's about nobody's coming to save us. What Reverend Rhonda is talking about. Yes. Um, we hold the keys to change. Mm -hmm. Yes. If change is going to happen, it's because we collectively uh, come together to conceive and, and start building strategies to change what is into what we will have it be. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. I heard uh, a wonderful uh, interview uh, with the principal of uh, Frederick Douglass uh, Academy. 
and um, his name escapes me, but he was just amazing. And that is really what he was saying. I mean, he was speaking the clearest, most truth to power that I've heard, um, you know, just in terms of um, we have to take initiative. Nobody can actually do this for us. And then obviously there are many other factoids that are coming into the community because um, the gun situation is out of control in terms of the amount of guns that are in the community. Even uh, young people, 10 and six, you know, having access to a gun. And also a lot of young people are afraid. So they're starting to take up weapons to protect themselves. You know, not necessarily, but um, this is what one of our principals, you know, said, who is right here in Central Harlem, that we truly have to um, take it into hand ourselves. And I love the fact that um, Blackberry Productions Documentary Theater Company uh, is taking action uh, through a medium and that, you know, across the drama therapy and the health development and all of that. Uh, that you do, um, there's a team effort to make some changes. So what is next? Um, is this project ongoing? Uh, what are some of the um, you know, things that are gonna happen uh, in this coming year? Okay, well, thank you for asking. Um, the community is organizing for partnership and peace community forum next Tuesday is the, the first of what we are looking forward to being a series of community forums, um, opportunities that we're creating to convene and creative collaboration around the issues impacting us. Um, the next series of workshops between black and brown youth and police is going to uh, pick up at March 16th on Thursdays from March 16th through May 12th um, at uh, the Children's Storytelling Museum, the gallery, the real gallery at the Children's Storytelling Museum um, on 155th Street and Edgecombe Avenue um, at, from six to eight in the 8.30 in the evenings. So um, we're hoping people will also sign up, bring their, their young people. There's a, a, a I think, is it a waiting list, Akanke? Yeah, but there are okay. slots open for young yes. people to join oh, yes. us. Okay. Yes, there's a waiting list, so people need to um, get on as soon as possible, okay. um, uh, you know, to contact us to participate in the workshops. Okay. And well, I also I wanted to add to that, that, um, we have the documentary that we're doing um, under the direction of uh, uh, Diane Wilson and uh, Manuel. Uh, Cuellar. Cuellar. I'm sorry. Manuel yes. Cuellar. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, that is being done uh, around all the projects. And um, so hopefully that will continue to be developed and we'll oh. be able to start looking at a, a citywide model for mm -hmm. uh, working with youth and the police and taking this project into the schools and um, also, you know, uh, being representative as a national model that uh, is working. Okay, um, okay. Well, that, I think that's a fabulous idea. Um, I'm Terry Wisdom, this is Harlem Network News. And I think, um, these kinds of visuals, like I said, I've had the uh, honor to look at some of the modules that are going out to uh, teachers across New York City. And these little documentaries and videos and sharing, because in order for the teachers to be in the right position to deal with the youth, because they're dealing with the youth as much as the parents. So it's important that everybody, all of the parents and tenants of the community come together and, and have the education and input the education so that change could come. So I want to salute you uh, for the great work that you're doing. Um, Reverend Rhonda, if you would give us a closing statement, and then we'll let you just really take us out, Dr. John Martin Green. And then once again, 
repeat about um, the event uh, that is coming. So go right ahead, Reverend. Thank you. I I I uh, first want to send out love and prayers and light to all the people who have been affected by policing in our community and our communities across the country. Um, particularly the families um, of those who have experienced police brutality or killings, um, which is not representative of all of police, but it has happened. So I first wanna send out light and love to them and um, to you, Terry, for continuing to share our news and let everybody know what's going on in the world uh, and the Harlems of the world and for uh, people to support Blackberry Productions um, and the work that they've been doing and are continuing to do with uh, financial donations, with uh, coming onto the website and writing your opinions about community and what you like to see, as well as uh, supporting Harlem Network News and its efforts to continue to share uh, information that is not being shared by other people for us and with us. Um, and come on out and be with us at the community forum. It's going to be some refreshments and uh, we're going to have a good time uh, together creating the kind of community that we want to create uh, with the people that attend and making sure that that happens. So thank you for having us on today. And I look forward to seeing you on February 21st from six okay. to eight at Harlem School of the Arts, the community forum, be there. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for that, Reverend Rhonda. And John, uh, Dr. John Martin Green, uh, do you have any closing? Uh, statements you'd like to share? I, I, don't, I can't top that. I think okay. that's wonderful. Okay. I love um, it. I, the only thing that occurs to me where Reverend Rhonda says um, there will be refreshments, um, you know how um, when you're on a website or on your, in your email and you're looking for something new to come in, how you refresh your page, how you can refresh your page. That's okay. what we're going to do with each other. Okay. We're going to refresh the community by as we convene in creative collaboration around issues of policing of our community on Tuesday, February 21st, 6 to 8 at Harlem School of the Arts. Bless you. Okay. Thank you, okay. Terry. Thank okay. You well, much. thank you very much for sharing. And uh, I'm Terry Wisdom. This is Harlem Network News. And I know uh, some of the special guests at uh, your forum uh, will be, of course, yourselves, the youth, uh, the police, but you will also have uh, to my understanding, uh, the borough president of Manhattan, Mark Levine, uh, community activist. Um, someone from uh, uh, from Mark Levine's office will be there. Oh, okay. Someone from Mark Levine's office. They'll be representative. Um, and uh, community activists with Street Corner Resources, Aisha Sekou, uh, NYPD director, uh, Brian Adams, our assembly member, uh, Reverend Al Taylor, and a representative from Community Board uh, 9, I believe the chair, uh, Barry Weinberg. So you're going to have across the board uh, people attending and really working to make a difference. Um, you know, it starts right with us. So, um, and that's why Harlem Network News continues to do the work, continues to get the information out. Uh, knowledge is power and to engage people to activism. So of course, donate to Harlem Network News, go to our website, harlemnetworknews.com. Um, you can call us at 646-261-5397. If you have stories or events or something happening that you think is vital and essential to the community, please reach out. Please share. Uh, it is critical, 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 critical. So we love thank you. you. We thank you. Let's all continue to do the work. And that's what I have to say. Ashe. Blessings and prayers Ashe. once again for all those who have lost life, including my beautiful son, Ali Sam Wayne Wisdom. And the violence is between the police and it 
is uh, people against people. There's a lot that we have to unpack and reply, but we've got to get the guns off the street. So thank you. And the drugs and mental illness is much to um, address. Lessons and prayers. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'll, I'll see you there. Have a great day. Great. All right.